We are live. It says we're live. Uh, hopefully people can see this. Hey, what's up, everyone? Uh, I'm Malcolm Whitfield. This is Comic Creator TV, brought to you by Pop Rock, uh, right over here at 337 East Ave, Rochester, New York. Come on down. When we reopen, we're still quarantined up, but it's cool because we got a lot of projects that I'm super excited about. Um, uh, one of them, of course, being Comic Creators TV. I um, actually have, um, oh, sorry, I got someone's knocking. That's the problem. When, as soon as I turned on the lights, I'm like, someone's going to think we're open. Oh, we're not. Um, um, anyway, everyone, I'm super excited to bring you <laughs> this person waiting very patiently. Um, he, You know him from a billion things. He has a comic strip called Sunshine State. You Maybe you know him from Monster Island. But for sure, you know him as one of the creators of the iconic Batman villain, Bane. Graham Nolan is here. What's up, Graham? How are you? I will break you. Yeah. <laughs> I was Okay, before you did that, I was workshopping, what should I say? I was going to say, he's the man who broke the bat. I'm like, God, <laughs> that's lame. You can't say that. But good to know you're also on that level. Absolutely. <laughs> All right. Well, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. It's as great as any of us can be being quarantined. Yeah, our- quarantine day, what, like 200 now? I'm like losing. I'm losing my mind here. Yeah. Thank well, you see, now doing- the rest of the world knows what it's like for cartoonists. We've been, I've been quarantined for 35 years. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. Are you uh, doing some work while you're over there? Like getting any? No, I, I wrapped up the day. I wrapped huh? up the day. I'm just hanging out with you right now. That's cool. Uh, that's fine. I've been uh, telling myself every morning when I wake up that I'm going to do something productive. And then every night I'm just like reading articles. That's like, it's okay if you didn't do anything today. And I'm just like, yeah, you're right. The internet, go back to sleep, start it all <laughs> over. That's basically how I've been operating. Um, well, again, thank you for doing this. Now you are based in New York State, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm just outside of Buffalo in right. East Aurora. Right outside of Buffalo. And you are going to be making an appearance weekly at Pop Rock, like you said, like you promised you would? I don't you know. know. I'm sorry. No, I, it's, <laughs> it's fine. But you're down. real close to Western New York. Uh, shouts out. And also shouts out to the people in the live stream commenting. Hello, everybody watching. I um, hey, uh, Let's uh, get into it real quick. So how did you get into comics? Uh, well, like most people as a fan first, uh, I, uh, uh, a bunch of comics got brought into my sixth grade class by my teacher, um, that he brought in for the classroom to read during recess. And, uh, I kind of gravitated towards them and really, really, really loved them and, and started copying them and drawing them and stuff like that. So that was my first, uh, like real exposure, uh, to comics. And then, uh, I'm assuming that there was like probably a step between sixth grade to creating one of the most iconic Batman villains. Was it, were you doing like- No, uh, I did that in the sixth grade. Huh? Oh, right then. I did wow. that in the sixth grade, yeah. <laughs> a regular prodigy. Uh, were you do, working on any stuff in between like your own stuff? Like how did, I guess you get you get noticed from that? Well, I, uh, I went to the Joe Kubert School for a few years. Joe Kubert School. Uh, mm-hmm. Very Shout cool. Out the, the QBs out there. <laughs> uh, hashtag cubies hashtag cubies yeah uh, a lot of great uh, uh, the artists uh, have come out of that school yeah uh, but I only went two years I ran out of money oh so, I uh, had the exact same problem <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know? I made it three years I was like you know what I get the gist and then I just sort of like I bounced right. from there uh, well, so I, I, uh, private schools I, I lucked out in that one of my teachers was the talent coordinator at DC Comics uh, yeah. Sal Amendola. So um, he was my uh, narrative art teacher. So uh, he actually bought two assignments from his class that I had done for uh, the comic uh, New Talent Showcase, which he edited. Uh-huh. So that was my first professional sale. Oh, very cool. I can't imagine what that's like just having a big DC guy just be like, hey, you are the next one of us. That's uh, I well, been you know, getting the foot in the door and keeping it in the door are two different things. You know, I mean, yeah. those are my first sales. Uh, but you know, there was, there was a, a gap between them. Uh, yeah. I, I worked in advertising to pay the bills. Um, and then uh, I lived just outside of New York city at the time so that I could go into the uh, editorial offices uh, and uh, see editors every week show them new stuff and just basically get my face out there and selling yourself make a connection. Hmm? Just like selling yourself. I want to say it's more like what you're doing. 
Well, part of it is, I mean, part of it's relationships, you know, uh, the artwork, you know, obviously has to speak for itself, but you know, if you're a jerk, you know, yeah. and it was not likely to, to, to give you a, a job, you know, of course yeah. those days are gone. You can't do that anymore. Well, yeah, um, now you can just be a jerk and do whatever. <laughs> <laughs> well, what I, I mean, you, buy. you can't go up to the offices. Well, yeah, I mean, physically, no, not right now. Uh, that's not something you could do. It's, it's, it's probably a different world now. So um, is that one of the major differences, I guess, you've seen between like when you started and uh, where we are now in comics? Yeah, you could call an editor up uh, and, and say, hey, you know, I'd like to come in. They would say yes. And then once you're in the door, you could bounce around to different editors' offices and peek your head and introduce yourself and stuff like that. Um, after 9-11, you couldn't even get up the elevator unless somebody came down to get you. Yeah, security um, beefed up. Yeah. Across it, it, across the board in every long, long. Yeah. yeah. I can imagine. So now everybody, you know, makes these relationships either at conventions or over the Internet, you know. That's how I, they, that's how I they would probably it. say over the internet is probably one of the bigger ones just from seeing something like, hey, this person does a lot of cool fan art of this character. Maybe mm -hmm. that'll like get them in the direction of. Yeah. Yeah. Man, what is it like? Um, what's it like drawing such an iconic character like Batman for Batman and then seeing that go just across the globe? What was, <laughs> I guess, that feeling like? Because your Batman is like, Kind of one of the more iconic ones. You have the real long ears. Something I uh, no, Kelly really Jones had the long ears. I yeah. I had the I had the uh, traditional. Uh, uh, I want to say uh, Bob Kane or uh, um, uh, Don Newton ears. You know. Yeah, yeah, keep it keep it like original like that. Man, what's that feeling like? You know, when you see that. Uh, like when I first started drawing Batman and seeing it printed. Oh yeah, of course. Yeah, th it was it was uh, unbelievably exciting. Um, because I always wanted to draw Batman from the time I was a kid watching the Adam West TV show when it came out, you know, um, that was Batman to me, you know, and then getting into the Denny O'Neill and Jim Aparo and, uh, Neil Adams stuff. Um, you know, I was Can just, I you, just love I, was the like, I was like so late to the Adams, to the Adam West, uh, Batman. And I know I, you know, I, cause I grew up like, 90s 2000s and all this stuff i totally knew about and i knew it was like a goofy one but i did not understand how great that show was until recently oh, right oh it, it, I, it. I was just watching them last week uh, i have them uh, <clears throat> on voodoo and yeah. i was watching a bunch of the episodes that first season is amazing mm -hmm. uh, that's what I've, I've been like just streaming all sort of i already did my marvel movies rewatch i did I'm going through all of the DC, especially with the uh, DC Universe channel, going mm -hmm. through all the cartoons and all that as well. So basically, it's just I'm almost out of everything I learned in high school and college in filling up my brain with just pop culture stuff. <laughs> like, basically, it's just trivia at this point. Um, let's see. I uh, do want to get back to Bane, which is, you know, I would say is some, uh, something of a calling card for you. What sure. now, the process of creating Bane. Uh, which came first? Was it the, were you working with the author? Um, it was Chuck, Chuck Dixon mm -hmm. you were working with. Were you working with him on that? Did he give you information and you were interpreting that or yeah. did you come with your own? No, uh, uh, he gave me information because they had had meetings. Uh, Denny O'Neill wanted to do this storyline. Um, cause if you remember back in those days, um, the Punisher and Wolverine were super popular. Oh yeah. <laughs> and they were, they were killing their villains, you know, and fans were writing and saying Batman needs to be more like them. You know, that Batman needs to kill his villains because, Ooh. you know, the Joker keeps going out and killing people, you know, so, you know. That is an argument as old as time. Yeah. Well, Denny wanted to let him, let the fans know that that's a really bad idea and let's show them why. So the premise was to take Bruce Wayne out and install a more vicious and a meaner Batman, which would be Jean-Paul Valet. Uh, but mm -hmm. to do that, we needed a character to to put it in motion. Uh, because Ezra Miller, for everyone who might not be familiar, as familiar and just like loaded with this information as uh, me. Well, there was nobody that fit the bill. This is the problem uh, mm -hmm. in Batman's canon uh, or Rogues Gallery, I should say. So uh, you know, uh, Chuck and Denny uh, uh, discuss some ideas. Uh, and when Chuck settled in on uh, that the character was going to be born in a um, 
kind of a banana republic prison serving out the sentence of his of his father you know yeah he exactly started telling me this information and so then you know i figured that that this character if he was going to create a costume for himself and he had to have a costume because we needed to license things and stuff like right. that uh it would be based upon maybe the only thing he would have seen which would have been mexican luchador so okay. that's where the, the 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 look came from right um and he was yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah exactly speaking to his uh hispanic roots which is another very cool aspect to just add in there uh, for Bane and all that. And you do see the influence in how you uh, drew it. Uh, what I found was really cool when I was going back through Nightfall and like the prelude and all that, something I completely, it's so obvious, but like the in, right where he's like injected into the venom, where the venom gets injected right into his brain, you mm -hmm. outlined that he always has that like star right there for him. Uh, right. Another very cool thing. Uh, where you threw in, man, what a just dark mirror, exact opposite of uh, Batman. Uh, you know, uh, Bane is supposed to be basically uh, an evil Doc Savage. Yeah, so, I mean, I see it. I do yeah, see he's it. He's super strong, super smart. He has exactly. his henchmen. He's got Trog, Zombie, and Bird, which is like uh, Monk, Rennie, and, uh, uh, and um, Ham. Um, and if you look, when Bane has his mask off, he's got this widow's peak. Because what exactly, I did, yeah. I, I took the idea of James Bama's paintings and I shaved his head around it, leaving the widow's peak. And that way, because I needed the back of his head to be exposed so that we could see the ports for for and yeah. hair wouldn't get in the way. So basically, it's a it's Doc Savage with a shaved head. Yeah, <laughs> it is fan. Fantastic. Uh, I actually did just get a question, which leads into uh, my next question. Uh, the question posed by Taylor Walder, shouts out, is uh, how do you feel about Bane's interpretation in the Nolan movies? I was just going to tie that in with what are some of your favorite uh, iterations and interpretations of Bane that you've seen? Because there have been, you know, countless from like, you know, Bruce Timm, uh, his version when he did the Batman show, even in the Batman Beyond, that's different. I don't know if you've seen the new Harley Quinn show. They have like kind of a, it's a real goofy, they basically, you know, lifted the voice from the movie and took yours beefed up, uh, venomed out Bane uh, as okay. the character design. But what, what are some that you really like? I like the Bruce Timm one, that's my favorite. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't like any of the live action ones. Oh, none of uh, them. I, but I do like, um, is it Young Justice? I think there was a Young Justice version. Yeah, they had him in Young Justice, and like he could, the mouth was cut out of the Luchador mask, uh, if I remember correctly, because I remember seeing him talk. Is that the one that um, um, uh, Machete? Uh, what's his name? Um, the actor who played Machete. Oh, Danny Trejo. Yes, Danny Trejo. Yeah. Is that the one that he voiced? I think that is. I don't want to speak out of turn, but I remember you know when I was going down That's this the one that he did. That's the one I like. That one. Big fan of that one, yeah. Yeah, I um, I, I was quite partial to the Batman Beyond, which is just sort of like aftermath of years and decades of you know be, the Venom addiction and the exposure in his blood left him like truly a useless husk. Mm -hmm. Um, what about a uh, comic book adaptations? Do you have any other favorite storylines that Bane's been through? Because you really I've, did just sort of like launch a movement. I've never read any. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, I've read a, I've read a few of them. Actually, right now they did something that was very similar to uh, how you sort of introduced Bane in Nightfall, where it's just sort of Arkham attacks all of Gotham. Uh, it's City of Bane. It's the newest thing they just did with. They brought back Tom. We, they brought back Thomas Wayne. It's it's a lot of it's a lot of goofy stuff. But that's uh, I, I saw one. some of that. Is that the Tom King stuff? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I, I saw some of that. I I didn't care for it. Oh, yeah, really? No, no. Well, then again, I guess that's like, it is your baby, and it is weird. It must be, like, different seeing how another artist or another mind is, like, twisting and turning it. Yeah, I, I, I haven't liked any of the, uh, um, or many of the, the art interpretations, particularly in that storyline. Uh, I didn't feel that they got Bane, that they understood right. who he was. Uh, you know, having him sit around naked, uh, uh, on a throne, just it, you know, the seemed of skulls that you often see. Uh, yeah, yeah. It, it, it it seemed, uh, um, and some of his behavior too. It just seemed like they didn't quite understand 
what motivates him and what makes right. him interesting and separates him from other villains. You know, the thing that, the, that I find most interesting about Bane as a character is that he thinks that he's not a bad guy because he thinks he's an innocent. And, and technically, he was. I mean, with he was with his totally, yeah. to serve a prison sentence for something he never did. So he's molded into this horrific creature by the environment. And so when he does bad things, it's like he's getting his. You know, I'm getting back at the world. The world owes me. And I think that's a very powerful aspect of who this character is. So speaking more to that. Uh, the version that has been presented lately is a little less calculating and a little bit more manic uh, and sort of insane in the way that he's acting and just more for power, uh, right. like overpowering other people. Whereas the vision that you gave us, he had a goal from a vision from when he was a child to find the bat and destroy him. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he is not manic. He's very calculating. Oh you know, yeah, that's the thing is, is that you know he, you know we did a scene in Bane, uh, Bane of the Demon where he's playing chess with Ray Shal Ghul, and he's playing twenty chess games at the same time, and half of them he's won, he's beaten Ray Shal Ghul at. You know, so it just shows you he's such a tactician and such a thinker and planner. You know, just through that one visual image. That's what he did with all of that time. Meanwhile, in quarantine, I just bought a bass ukulele, which <laughs> is some would argue a more useless version of an already useless instrument. So, <laughs> he, and you know, meanwhile, Bane's learning six languages and all that. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, but I, uh, I digress. Um, I want, I was wondering if you'd be able to maybe help better outline the relationship between uh, an artist. Uh, Cause this is a question I've gotten a couple of times that I'm not entirely certain how to answer between the penciler uh, the colorist or the writer and the letterer, like what, how you would uh, communicate with the whole team there? Uh, uh, I'm not sure I understand the question. Do you, you want me to, to differentiate the job? Well, after? just sort of, yeah, yeah, pretty much just what each role does and uh, where you were in the process of creating Bane. Like, I guess on, is it, if it's more like an assembly line or if it's back and forth, if you're all in a room together. With creating Bane? Yeah, yeah. Well, with creating Bane and Nightfall. Okay. Well, those are two separate things. Um, with creating Bane, it's primarily you're dealing with editorial. You're dealing. Uh, I'm dealing with the writer, uh, and I'm the artist and designer. So that's it. Okay. You know, I uh, I take the information, I design it, they approve it, or they, or, or say ask for changes. You know, like uh, when I designed Bane. I got him right on the, on the first drawing, <laughs> ninety 98.9% was dead there on the first drawing. The things that were different was I had more wires going into his head, and the biggest change was the mask. Uh, the mask was basically a real luchador mask. The same shape and the same design that was around it, only his eyes were open. His nose was open and his mouth was open. And the reason for that was uh, if you ever wore a mask, like all of us are nowadays, you can't breathe in the damn things. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think we're all as a people learning that every day. Yeah. So hard. But imagine I'm like, oh, I'm kind of used to it, but uh, yeah. that's a pretty hefty one. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I was thinking in terms of reality and also uh, from my chores as an artist, I want to be able to have this character emote. So I felt that if I showed his, his, his mouth and his eyes, it would make him, you know, I, I could get a lot more emotion out of him. Uh, but that was a, a, an issue that DC disagreed with. And they, an editorial to say, well, let's just cover up the, the openings, you know? Uh, and I think it was probably, you know, it was probably a good, good decision uh, because it's become iconic that way. Um, it, it, and the basic reason was they wanted him to be more mysterious. I see. Yeah. A, ma a you know, masked mystery man type of thing. Yeah, it makes sense. It makes sense yeah. for what they were going for. Right. So, um, so to switch gears just a little bit, um, <laughs> the, your, uh, webcomic Sunshine State, uh, seems to be leaps and bounds away from the prisons of Santa Prisca and the, you know, gargoyles of Gotham. What, right. <laughs> Tell me what that project is to you 
uh, right now? Is it kind of like a rela- like a break from all the darkness and the monsters that you're usually working with? Uh, yes. It, uh, it's, it's my favorite project to work on in my career. If, yeah. if I could monetize that, you know, like <laughs> Charles Schultz did, you know, and make millions of dollars doing a cartoon like that, a comic strip, I, I do it in a, in a heartbeat. I was just going through it last night, just like hitting random on it. And uh-huh. each one is just a fun little story. I'm just like, this is very silly. And like um, after immediately reading Nightfall too, it was just like, <laughs> I think it was welcome. It was a welcome yeah. reprieve. It's also, it's it's cathartic for me. Uh, I grew up in Florida. I live in Western New York now. Uh, and so it's sort of like a way, particularly in the winter time, you know how it is up here. Uh, yes, it, it is cold. the worst. No. <laughs> it's, it's a... It's a way for me to kind of uh, mentally uh, put myself in a warm place. Yeah. So you know, it, it's, it stretches totally different creative muscles. Uh, and and I, I just I just love it. Say, does it help with, you know, warm things up? It helps with my mind. <laughs> it helps keep my, my mind right, you know. I understand. I'm from yeah. the South, too. I'm actually from Atlanta. And uh, I've been up here in Western New York and Central New York for – like almost 20 years now and my blood still has not adjusted. I still hate seeing the snow. I find no pleasure in looking, watching it gracefully fall. I hate every part of it. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I, I yearn for that. So maybe that's why I reacted as strongly as I did to Sunshine State. I yeah. was like, oh, this is what it should be though. Yeah. It's yeah. also a lot of fun because, you know, I, I make, sh- it's not snarky. It's not political. You know, right. it, it, it's all about, um, I wanted it to be the, um, for the reader, I wanted it to be their vacation spot on the comic page. Right. You know, where you could go relax, just like you would if you were sitting at the beach with a, with a, with a cocktail and a warm breeze blowing on you. You know, that's the vibe I want to try and, you know, I think get. that is the vibe that you get. I have, um, Excellent. I do have a couple questions from, uh, listeners and people writing in, I, uh, but also I want to get to my questions first. So So I uh, also was able to find Monster Island uh, online and go through that. And in just your drawing and the shapes and the figures, I'm guessing you were way into like monster movies and stuff growing up. Is that, was that fair to guess? Well, yes, because uh, the other aspect of how I got into comics was actually through monster magazines. Uh, Before my teacher brought in those comics, I used to go to the the candy store and stuff and buy these monster magazines like uh, the Monster Times, which was like a weekly newspaper of (laughs) the Monster Times, the Monster Times. It looked just like the logo for The New York Times only had monster in it. And uh, it was newsprint, just like a newspaper. And you'd open it up every week and there'd be stories in there about monster movies and comics. So that's where I first started seeing um, advertisements for comics and also articles on what was happening in comics during uh, this was the early 1970s, like 1972, I think. Um, So so to answer your question, yes, monsters came first. Uh, (laughs) I saw my first monster movie and I was like. I can't remember if I was six or eight. It was Frankenstein meets the Wolfman. Scared the pants off me, and I loved them ever I, since. I don't know how you do it. I'm still just such a baby with any monster movie, any horror. I can't do it. Like comics and reading one thing. I remember I was in college when I first read Walking Dead. I got a couple of those thick trades, and I could not sleep. I'm here <laughs> thinking I'm a grown adult, and I still can't handle any of that nightmare stuff. Yeah, Nightfall is just fine for me. Yeah, okay. I'm cool with Bane and, you know, the horrors of Arkham. Big monstrous guy like Bane. Yeah. Now, that is another very cool form. I think, um, I'm sure people have said this all the time about, like, uh, the early 90s in comic book art, but it's all, like, big, hulking muscle forms. Uh, Did you take any inspiration from peers, or is that just, like, all you and your uh, influences with, like, monstrous stuff? Well, my Bane... Uh, is uh, different than a lot of people. So like when people draw Bane, and I think it started with Kelly Jones on the covers where he kind of exaggerated Bane to the point of looking like the Hulk, you know, where he's just, you know, over... Um, like a nine foot tall, just... Mad. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Mm-hmm. Whereas my Bane is is the biggest bodybuilder you'll ever meet. 
he's like still the upper limits of the human body. That, uh, yeah. that human body. He's like in my mind, he's like six foot six, three hundred and fifty pounds of just solid muscle. You know, he's right. not Hulk proportions. I see. Yeah, he's not like an amygdala or like Grundy guy. He's right. just right. He's just like a huge dude you don't want to run into in an alley. Yeah. That's exactly. It. All right, so I'm gonna actually, I do feel bad. I am actually gonna read some of the questions from uh, people watching right now. Uh, by the way, shout out to everyone watching. I, uh, this one just says, I'm going to blow up Gotham Stadium. I don't think that's a question. Uh, what are, <laughs> uh, how has physical isolation influenced the process of creating comics and art for you? I think that's just more of a question specifically about these times. You mentioned earlier that like, as an artist, you're pretty much yeah, isolated. We're already and physically isolated. That, that, that's the nature of the beast for us. Uh, so nothing has changed. Yeah, easy adjustment. Yeah. I, guess. yeah. I, I, uh, I know I'm someone who, like, I feel like thrives a little bit more if more people are around. So I decided, you know what? I'm going to start making a comic. So I bought my little uh, Wacom, Wacom tablet, and I'm sitting there, and I'm just sitting there. And I'm just sitting there and 30 minutes goes by. I'm like, I think I, that was a lot of brain work I did today. So uh, <laughs> isolation is uh, maybe not meant for everybody. Um, <laughs> nope, I mean, maybe not. <laughs> let's see. What's the best official way to read Sunshine State and what's it about, says uh, one of our uh, followers right now. Ah, well, you can go to uh, sunshinestate.com and read it there. I post new strips every Monday uh, and then I post older strips every day. So every day there's going to be a strip okay, uh, very cool. and uh, the store, the basic premise of, of Sunshine State is, is that it, it's, it's, it focuses on the relationship of two friends, an alligator named Mel and a pelican named Dink. And they're <laughs> complete opposites, but they're the best of friends. You know, like Dink, uh, he always has his, eye, uh, his iPhone on him on a belt and uh, he's got the ear earbuds in his ears all the time. Very progressive, very, very technology. How yeah, progressive if he's wearing his iPhone on his belt. So. <laughs> and Mel the alligator, by the by contrast, like alligators haven't haven't changed in 30 million years. So yeah. he's, he's much more, you know, if he's going to listen to music, it's going to be on a record player. It's not going to be, you know, digital. Exactly. He doesn't own a cell phone. He doesn't watch a TV, all that kind of stuff. Uh, and they go on little adventures together. Uh, we point... Um, uh, the humor of the strip is is um, uh, sometimes satirical, sometimes witty, sometimes um, uh, lyrical. Uh, I do some stuff with uh, poetry as well with them, uh, but it all has that kind of uh, Florida getaway Jimmy Buffett <laughs> feel to it. Uh, Margaritaville, just <laughs> it's a cheeseburger in paradise of the mind is how right? I, I describe yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> Very cool. Well, like I said yeah. earlier, it's it's your vacation. It's your vacation spot on the comic page. Vacation spot on the comic page. Awesome way. So I uh, go. Ahead, I went ahead and I threw the link in there. So it's probably down here or over here. I don't know how anyone's computer works, but click on that if you want to check out Sunshine State. Um, I'm probably going to go through that for a little bit before I go home today. Uh, I have another question here. What are good avenues for an aspiring writer or artist to be noticed in the modern world of creating comics? In your That's a good question. Um, in some ways, it's harder, uh, particularly if when you used to live close to the city and you could get yeah. in there physically. Uh, but in other ways, there's a lot more opportunities because um, you can get your work out there uh, utilizing uh, virtual portfolios like uh, Behance. Uh, right. Adobe has, uh, if you're part of the Adobe suite, you can create a portfolio like I did online. Uh, and, and it's up there. Um, so that you'll have a link to send to editors. Mm -hmm. Um, but the, the best way today is to do something, uh, and get it published, whether it be you print on demand yourself, uh, you start your own web comic, uh, and build your own audience with that. Uh, and that way, uh, editors or um, people in power can see get it out there. Yeah, you, you got to get it out there and, and you got to let people know that it is out there. That's very cool. All right. That's a uh, good advice for any, you know, fledgling artist named Malcolm Whitfield. 
who are trying so desperately just to put something on the page. Uh, I don't know if you necessarily- Well, to you, Malcolm, you can't sit by your walk-on for two hours and not put anything down. <laughs> hey, hey, I'm only for 30 minutes, only 30 minutes, and then All I right. break and came back. It's 30 minutes on, 30 minutes off. That's the way I okay. do it. Uh, but that's- uh, Get it down, get it down. Refine yep. it later. Yeah, so, oh, someone else, people, yeah, people are just putting Sunshine State is available on Go Comics. Got to add that to my list. All yes. right, Thanks for more fans right there. Uh, Go Comics. Um, let me see. Uh, more questions for you. Are you um, reading anything now? Are you watching anything now? Uh, any other, just sort of any area of nerdiness, like Star Wars, Harry Potter, Star Trek, anime, any of that? Uh, no, not really. None of that? You're just no. too cool for all of that. You did your <laughs> thing. Like, all right, nerds, I'll see you later. No, no. no. I, I, uh, I just, just before the quarantine and everything, I went and finally saw the last Star Wars movie. Oh, uh, yeah. Thoughts? So, you know, I mean, I, I watch that stuff, but I, you know, yeah. uh, I have other interests too. You know, I love Westerns. Uh, hey, I, watch I, I, I consider that nerdy as well. I count anytime you love something and know a ton about that that's just regular. you could be nerdy about I'm basketball too I'm, not, and I'm, a, I'm a nerd about monster movies too i mean you know there you go. exactly on, on my facebook page around halloween on uh, october 1st uh i've been doing this annually for like five years 31 days of monsters and i post a monster on my facebook page every day and i write about it and i write about the movie and where you can see it and all that kind of stuff and it, there's some really obscure stuff some really cool stuff some really crappy stuff <laughs> but, <laughs> but people love it you know they they, they can't wait for that uh, you know yeah. the people that follow my page love That's that really everybody. cool so i mean there's a plug right there if you're into monster movies and you know every now and then sometimes crap go ahead and check out uh graham's 31 days of monsters um, all right, so I'm looking and we are at the 32 minute mark. I think that's probably like a solid place to uh, stop. Is there anything you want to plug? Uh, any projects you're working on that you can talk about? Any? Uh, uh, I, just, I just finished uh, the last pages for The Expendables Go to Hell. Oh! Indiegogo project uh, that I did with Chuck Dixon. Uh, it's still up. Uh, it, I mean, the. Back together. Yeah. Uh, it's it's really it's really cool. And Sylvester Stallone plotted it with Chuck, uh, and it's it was basically the idea the Stallone had was like he wanted to do this movie, but he knew he could never get it done. And Chuck is like, well, what is it? And he goes, the Expendables go to hell, and it's it's crazy and 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 Gonzo as you imagine it would be. <laughs> it's I crazy. All of those words just got my heart racing because yeah. I love the Expendables. I love comics that are just like, oh, you thought we were done? Oh, uh, yeah. Ninja yeah. Turtles just did that. They had a Shredder in Hell thing, too. It was, oh, okay. yeah, I will definitely be looking into that. Also, yeah, it's, it's, it's on Indiegogo. Huh? It's on Indiegogo. So on if you go to Indiegogo and type in Expendables Go to Hell, you can, you can, you can order the book. All right, there you go. Expendables go to hell on Indiegogo. Uh, one last question. Are you uh, open for commissions? I am. I am doing commissions right now. Um, I, I just, I, I'm actually having a sale because everybody, uh, the uh, conventions have stopped and everything. Right. So I, I, I knocked my prices down 20% uh, on all at home commissions. Oh, awesome. So, but what I'm doing right now, I, I had done at home uh, convention sketches, uh, and now I'm doing at home commissions, which is the full the full uh, artwork. Oh, that is insane! Everyone, if you're out there listening to that, fully take up to take them up on that. Uh, get yourself a Graham Nolan commission. Uh, if you, if you can email me uh, if you're interested in one at uh, Graham at GrahamNolan.com. Graham at GrahamNolan.com. And uh, we will go ahead and put that in the comments for anyone who's maybe just joining us now or coming in late or wants to watch this afterwards in the future. Hi, grandchildren. I don't know how far in the future we're going to be putting this. So I'm just covering all my bases. Um, so <laughs> Graham and your website real quick. Uh, actually, you know what? Uh, it, it's it's the uh, Adobe one. I can't remember what the actual <laughs> I mean, people, I, I assume everyone knows how to use the internet and knows how to put in 
Graham Nolan oh, art and stuff. It's it's uh, Graham Nolan dot my portfolio dot com. Graham Nolan dot my part portfolio dot com. Right. All right, we got it in there. Um, Graham, thank you so 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 much for joining us today. You're I very totally can't wait to go home and dig into Expendables in Hell and see how <laughs> Chuck Dixon, Dixon managed to letter everything Sylvester Stallone was saying. I'm excited <laughs> to see how that works. Uh, but thank you for joining us today, and uh, you know, stay safe out there. Thank you, thank you, thanks right. everybody. Yep, have a have great a night, night. Right. and we'll see you. Yep. Uh, all right, everyone. That was Graham Nolan, the uh, co-creator of Bane. My head is spinning right now. We'll put all the information on where you can find his artwork, where you can read uh, all of his comics. Monster Island, Sunshine State, of course, Nightfall, that whole series. Uh, Nightfall, Night's Quest, and Night's End, Prelude, all of that from DC. Uh, my name is Malcolm Whitfield. You can follow me at Marvelous underscore Mal. Uh, and also follow Pop Rock at Pop Rock Culture on Instagram and just search Pop Rock Serial uh, Bar and Comic Book Shop on Facebook. Um, I'm going to get out of here now. I got a lot of reading to do. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. All right. Bye.